Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to create this Maramico chart in Flourish. I created this graph as an alternative to the standard Choropleth map that you often see for election results because, as we all know, maps can distort our perception of the data, especially of election results, because, as we all know, land doesn't vote, people vote. So what you see when you look at maps is you see you know, you might see fewer areas of a certain color representing a political party, but those areas might be the urban centers so there's a lot of people. So this visualization that you see in front of you is a Miramico chart where I have scaled the bars, the width of the bars corresponding to the total number of votes, you can see down here in millions, and then the vote share along the vertical axis. So, for example, Hennepin County here in Minnesota, that's the map of Minnesota I've added to my tooltip. Uh, you can see that the map itself looks fairly red, but when you start to scale this by the number of votes, you see a different result. So Hennepin County, um, which is um, where Minneapolis uh, is housed mostly, is down here. Uh, you can see it's a very populous county. Um, and in this particular county, Tim Walls, the Democrat, won 70% of the vote compared to Scott Jansen, the, uh, the Republican candidate, won uh, about uh, 26% of the vote. So that's what this graph is trying to do. So I'm gonna show you how to create this in Flourish. So let's go over to the data. I'm gonna work directly in Flourish this time. You can see that I have the name of the county over here in column A. I've got the percentage of the vote for Walls in column B, the percentage for Jansen in column D, and then I've got the numbers in these other ones. And then you'll see I repeat those percentages in columns G and H. And I'll show you why I did that in just a second. But let's take a look at how I created this. So over here, you can see the um, name I'm going to use. Um, I guess I'm actually just, this I don't actually care about because I'm not actually going to add a label to the visualization. So this can actually stay empty. Uh, the primary metric I'm going to use, so that's going to be uh, the uh, the horizontal, so the primary metric for this graph is the horizontal. That's going to be the number of total votes. And then the secondary metric that's going to be along the vertical axis is going to be column B and column D. And then I've added everything to my possibilities for doing my tooltips. So that's how the data are set up. Fairly straightforward. You just need the name of the geography, in this case the county, the percentage for each of the candidates, and then the total number of votes. That's really all of you need, all you need. So let's go over to the graph and let's take a look at what we've got. So the colors, very simple. I'm just going to name each one and then put the red and the blue in here. So that's fairly straightforward. The X axis, uh, I'm setting this as a max, the total number of votes here. I could have rounded it up to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit nicer. Like if you do two, five million, I think I did that right. Um, you see you get this little weird gap there, so I don't really like that, so I'm just going to put that down to the maximum, this number I calculated out of the data. Um, I don't really have to do too much here on the on the x-axis, right? You can see it's just playing around with, you know, how many tick marks do I want? I just wanted four here. Um, I actually left the tick mark on, even though I don't necessarily need it. Um, and the other thing I do is uh, hit this toggle, uh, when I was using millions, and then I decided, ah, I'll just divide that by a million. And if I turn this off for a second, you'll see what I mean. You can see I've got this all in millions. I think that's overkill, so let's just put it back. And you see I've got it in millions. So fairly straightforward so far. I mean, not a lot really to, to worry about here. On the y-axis, uh, same thing. We're treating this as a percentage uh, so that it gets up to 100%. You need to change your label in here. Um, and there's really not much on here. I did have to manually set my tick marks. Um, so down here under ticks to show, you put the curly brackets first, the curly brackets last, that gives you the minimum and the maximum, and then whatever you want to have in between. I wanted to have at least 50%, because that's the important number, right? It's 50%. So I wanted to have that. That's how you see when you look at the map, um, in this particular map at least, when I have this up, um, you can see that, uh, these are shaded. Um, you know, they're not, it's not binary. They're binned. Um, but you get, you don't see, for example, uh, that even though Jansen won more than 10% of the vote in this county, uh, or, or edged by 10 percentage point in this county, it doesn't mean that zero Democrats voted, 
uh, or zero people voted for the Democrat Tim Walls in this county, right? That's the that's one of the issues with the map. Um, okay, so what else do we have? So we'll close the y-axis. Um, the last thing I think really to show is the pop-ups. Uh, you can see the pop-ups are fairly specific in how I built them. So I'm going to customize these. The county is over here in the brackets in the title. And then let's open up the uh, the body here. So what I've got down here is my text for total number of votes. And then I'm going to put in walls and I'm going to put in Jansen. And so I've done a few things here, uh, as you can see. First thing I do is use a little HTML. I don't know HTML. I've said that in other videos. I don't know HTML. So just a quick Google search of how do you add color to text in HTML? You open the bracket with font color, put in your hex code, and then close it up. I also use the walls PCT variables. So let's go back over here to my data. You see I have walls percent, Jansen vote percent, all spelled out. What I want to make sure I have in my map is that anytime I click on a county, I see all the data. And so I don't want to use the data that's being used in the plot. I want to add another column. This is how I need to get uh, in Flourish, how to make sure I get my data, the data I want showing up all the time, no matter what I'm clicking on. I need to add that as a separate variable that's just going to go in the info for pop-ups uh, 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 box here in the data tab. So that's why I'm repeating the same column. So column B and column G are the same, column D and column H are the same. They're just named differently. So that's why I have this sort of dual representation in the data tab. Um, and then finally, this iframe right here, that is the map that I created in another visualization. So a totally different instance. That's, I would say, much more straightforward because I just created a map uh, of Minnesota of the voting results. And then I just drop that into this pop-up. Um, and so as you can see, if I change these uh, back, so I'm going to make sure I get my my data, my variable names right. If I do walls vote percent and Jansen, I'll change the name here to Jansen vote percent. What happens when I click here is you can see I don't get the other value in each of these. And so that's why I want to have these two uh, repeated variables. So I'm going to undo that so you can see what I mean again. Now when I click, I get both numbers. No matter where I click, both numbers show up. I'm not exactly sure why this works. I'm sure it's something under the hood that I don't quite understand. But basically, it's the data being bound to the graph. That's all you see in the pop-up as opposed to adding these sort of separate, these separate fields. So it's a very straightforward graph to create in Flourish, it is just a Miramico chart. One last thing I forgot is this little line here, this little dashed line that I say half of all votes. I want to have that little annotation here. So I go to annotations. And here I'm just going to follow directions. This is the label that I want, half of all votes. And I just do a little math to find what that number is. And then I change the line color and the width and the dash. So that's how I added that little annotation here. Um, that's just in the annotations tab. So that's how I created this Miramico chart in Flourish. Uh, I have also created another version where I've done this for the 2020 presidential election, created a Miramico chart for every state in the country and laid it out as a tiled grid map. You should check out um, my Substack newsletter and the policyviz.com website um, where I have talked and written a little bit about that visualization itself. So thanks so much for listening. Make sure you subscribe to learn more about data visualization and Flourish and all of your other data visualization needs. Thanks so much.